Good morning, riders. Today is January 11th. My name is Cameron Nestor. And I'm Christian Harris. The week before break, we had a spirit week. Let's go take a look at our school spirit. You can count on me like one, two, three, I'll be there. And I know when I need it, I can count on you like four, three, two, and you'll be there. Cause that's what friends are supposed to do, oh yeah. Thanks, Malachi. Each year, Riders Basketball hosts the Blue and Gold Madness, so let's go to Tracy with the basketball program. Lazy Boy Productions. A word from our sponsors. Hi, I'm Alexis Burris and this is The Odd Couple. The Odd Couple is about two middle-aged women that get separated from their husbands and they decide to move in together. They are complete polar opposites and you see how it derails throughout the entire play. My name is Joy Phillips and my favorite thing about this show is the people. The cast is a lively bunch and they are definitely all my friends. Every rehearsal is one to remember. The play is on Saturday, January 12th at 3 p.m. Admission is whatever you can pay, and I guarantee you wouldn't want to miss it. Who doesn't like jumping into the ocean in 30 degree weather? I don't. I don't like jumping into the ocean in 30 degree weather. Anyway, exams are close, so Monday you're going to have a full day and the rest of the week will be half days. Want to see a magic trick? I guess. There's a schedule. Since when could you do that? Since ever. Uh, let's go look at the study tips.
Thanks, Alana. Now for our weekly segments. Good morning, Ryder Country. I'm Dejana Wynn with this week's weather report. Today, it's going to start off pretty chilly with it being in the mid-30s. This weekend, we are up for a bit of surprise. It will be a, in the 30s with a chance of snow in the late PMs, so be aware of that. Sunday will be in a mix of rain and snow, so unfortunately, the snow will not stick on Saturday. Monday through Thursday will be in the 40s with a chance of rain and snow on Thursday, so dress warm, hats, sweater, jackets, you name it. Have a great day, and go Riders! Two. Three chocolates and you take away two. Yeah, two. Two? That's a quick that's a trick. That's a trick question. I'm not going to. Just have three chocolates. <laughs> Dining with Dom. Dining with Dom. Good morning, riders. This is Dining with Dom, bringing you your lunch menu for next week. Now, Monday, we have buffalo mac and cheese. And since we have exams next week, Tuesday through Thursday are going to be assorted cold sandwiches. And then Friday, we have off. Thank you, and this has been Dining with Dom. If a baby's legs pop out at 11.59 p.m., but their head doesn't pop out till 12.01 a.m., what day was it born? Good morning, Riders. It's time for Kendall's Motivational Moment. Today's quote is by Sean Patrick Flannery. It reads, do something today that your future self will thank you for. Invest or something, buy stocks, do something to benefit yourself. This has been Kendall's Motivational Moment. Thanks everyone for the segments. That's all from us. I'm Cameron Esser. And I'm Christian Harris. And, and let's, let's go, go Riders. riders. Bumblebee is written by Christina Hodson, directed by Travis Knight, and stars Haley Steinfeld. Taking place in 1987, the film follows a broken and scarred Bumblebee, seeking refuge as he bonds with Charlie, an 18-year-old girl trying to find her place in the world. Welcome to Writer Reviews, this is Antonio Rivera. Let's make a couple things clear before we start. I have seen the first four Transformers movies, and I skipped the last night because I no longer wanted to suffer. With that said, forget all five of Michael Bay's attempts, because Bumblebee feels almost like a do-over. The dozens of retcons and changes to the lore Michael Bay made have been removed, so think of this new entry almost as an episode one of sorts. This movie fixes a lot of the problems that the original suffered from. For one, the writing has improved. The dialogue can still be awkward and the structure could use some work. At least the characters are actual characters this time, and they have goals and problems outside of just the main conflict, save for a few. None of the core characters are racial or sexual stereotypes, and they also have a lot more personality instead of I'm a loser who screams a lot and can't really do anything myself. You will not hit my car to collector's Or, I'm an inventor and also Mark Wahlberg. I do like Charlie as a character, even if those surrounding her are lacking some, and Bumblebee is also endearing. This movie has some great sound design, as the previous films had, but slowly got worse, and some decent but flawed effects. Although, this did have a considerably smaller budget than the past entries. However, this doesn't hold the movie back from having decent action, too. It was also great seeing a much shorter Transformers movie. This movie was rarely boring, and that's partly because of how contained it is. Compared to the first five, the film is significantly shorter and better paced, clocking in at under two hours. The others are near or past two and a half, the fourth stretching to two hours and 45 minutes. That's nearly equal to the length of Interstellar, Saving Private Ryan, and longer than most of the greatest action movies ever made. I just... I can't... I did have a couple of problems with Bumblebee. For one, the plot and how it flowed felt a little odd. There were several coincidences and conveniences that just didn't work for me, and it felt like the movie was just happening to the characters instead of them having any real impact on the story. They didn't move the story forward, it just kept going because of some coincidence or mistake. This does get a bit better as the movie progresses to the climax. I felt that the acting could have been better, including from Haley Steinfeld, who does a really good job here, but I know can do better because she's done better. There were also just weird little subplots and events that felt like they kind of went nowhere, and it was like the movie forgot about something. There's a scene where Charlie's mom takes B to drive somewhere, not knowing it's a giant robot, and Charlie chases after her. However, the conflict is just resolved in like a minute, and Charlie just drives instead of her mom, but 
leaves her bike behind that she went to chase her on. Like, it's literally just left there, and no one picks it up. She doesn't put it in the back of the trunk or anything. She just kind of drives off. There's also the issue of Bumblebee losing his voice. This kind of bothered me when I saw it at the beginning of the film. He gets attacked by a Decepticon who is threatening B for information. B refuses, and the Decepticon rips out B's voice modulator. Wait, what? Why? Why did this Decepticon knowingly remove the only way, at least to his knowledge, find out the information he was seeking? I, I don't know if this robot had any other plans, like he was going to interrogate B's internal systems or something, but B literally cannot talk anymore, yet I I I'm just confused. Was he just going to kill him after that? Regardless, this film is alright. It has some decent emotional payoffs and reverts many of the issues of the previous films. It's a fun film that doesn't take itself too seriously, and I recommend seeing it if you've been wanting a good Transformers movie for the past, well, nine years.